the delegate from Westmoreland, Delegate Ransom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise for a point of personal privilege. A delegate has the floor. Mr. Speaker, I want to begin with stating the obvious. I am a woman, and I'm an elected member of the oldest legislative body in the new world, the Virginia House of Delegates. And needless to say, I'm very proud of that, and I'm proud of how I got here. I've served in this body for seven years now. However, this morning, I experienced probably the most disappointing and discouraging event I have ever experienced during my time in this body. As a woman, the ERA is something I personally and fundamentally disagree with. I will talk about the reasons in just a moment, but as a delegate and as a woman elected to this body, that is a right of mine. Throughout my career as a small business owner and a delegate and even a mother, I have traveled all across my district speaking to young women and young girls, telling them, you too can do anything you set your mind to. I tell my daughter that too, and I encourage her to form her own opinions about the world, not just inherit mine. Mr. Speaker, what I saw this morning truly broke my heart. In my subcommittee this morning, the room was packed with women and young girls who came to participate in the political process. I'm not naive. I knew many of them were there to support a position I'm against. Nonetheless, as I tell young girls who I speak to as a delegate and even my own daughter, I don't care if you agree with me or not, participating in the political process is important. So this morning, as chairwoman of my subcommittee, I took a moment to try and speak directly to the young girls in attendance. Do you know, as soon as I started to speak, mothers in the room who simply disagreed with my position covered their daughters' ears as a sign to me and to their daughters that in the political process, you don't have to listen to people whom mom disagrees with. And to be honest, it was a low in my public service career because when I simply wanted to empower young women, that message delivered from a Republican woman simply wasn't worth hearing. Well, today, I will deliver that message again to the young women and to their mothers and to daughters and even to the 27 women in this body. Never Never let anyone tell you that you need anything more than hard work, determination, heart, and a strong work ethic to be successful in life. Amen. None of those things are something that can be outright given to you. And likewise, it cannot be taken away from you. If you set your mind to it, you too can sit right here where we all sit, and you can be a delegate or a senator, or one day you'll become the first female president of the United States of America. Look in your community now and see the women serving in top positions. Where I live, women are Commonwealth attorneys, they're police chiefs, they're military leaders, they serve on my school boards, their board of supervisor members, their doctors, their lawyers, their presidents of my community colleges, their business owners, their bankers, and they are the greatest job in the world. They run the households, their moms. So young women whose ears were covered today in my subcommittee, look in your community and look at the awesome leaders that women have grown to be. I attended Randolph-Macon, and I conquered a lot of hurdles to be there, but the people that are judging me and cut it, cutting me down, I'm not going to tell you my life history. I've had a lot of occupations to get to be where I am today. I'm a member of the House of Delegates, and it took a lot to be here. 
I'm a proud mother and a proud wife. And I did all of this as a woman and without this Equal Rights Amendment. This morning, I voted against the ERA because I think it's simply not needed. As a side note, I've heard from women who come by my office and say to me, don't let a bunch of men bully you into turning your back on women. Let me tell you something. The men in this body on both sides of the aisle, they respect me and they have become incredible friends to me. And I've earned their respect. They've embraced me and they've embraced my opinions and they believe in me. And that's incredible. They empower me to speak my mind just like I'm doing today. And as a strong, independent woman, it was my choice to vote against the ERA. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Women deserve equal treatment. Women deserve to be paid fairly. Women deserve to have every opportunity in life just like a man does. And thanks to the 14th Amendment and the Virginia Constitution, violating any one of those is against the law. The 14th Amendment says the government shall not deny any person equal protection of the laws. The last time I checked, I fall under any person. Year after year in this body, I've had supporters of the ERA come to my office with young girls, and the adults look at that young girl and tell them, you can never be successful because the ERA is not in the Constitution. That is a simply wrong message to send to our daughters. We need to empower them. and tell them they don't need a piece of paper to serve in the Virginia House of Delegates or higher. And to all the young girls out there, I was trying to say that this morning when their ears were covered. And let me say this again. Who knows if the so-called ERA will ever be ratified by another state? And who knows after the court battles that are sure to ensue if it will ever actually become the 28th Amendment? But regardless, Never let anyone tell you that you need to wait on any law to be successful. If you want to be a doctor and save lives, don't let it stop you. If you want to be a teacher and teach the next generation, don't let that stop you. If you want to work in politics as a Democrat or a Republican or an independent and serve your community, don't let that stop you. Nothing stopped any of us. And with hard work and determination, and a big heart, nothing's going to stop you either. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Amen.